Hello and welcome. It's Kendra Morgan here with Cards by Kendra, and it is time for a new quarterly card making challenge. If you're not already familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you get to use the free cutting templates and card sketches that are provided in the PDF file that's available for download on my website. And you'll use this to create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper. So think of it like a one sheet wonder except times six. For this challenge, you can make 17 cards. That's a lot of cards. <laughs> You'll also need some matching colored cardstock, and then you can decorate the cards with, with whatever stamps, dies, or embellishments that you'd like. The new free PDF download is now posted on my website, and I will link it in the description box below. So once you make your cards, you'll post pictures of your creations on social media using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 4, and you can enter to win some amazing prizes so if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you won't miss any of the videos. We have three amazing prizes this quarter from some really awesome companies who have graciously offered to sponsor challenge number four. Our sponsors this time are Pink and Main, TLC Designs, and Whimsy Stamps, but I'll talk more about the prizes here shortly. Let me go ahead and show you what you'll need to do to be able to use the PDF file. This is a printout of the PDF file, and these are the cutting templates for the first two sheets of paper. As with the last challenge, I added some scissors to show which part of the paper needs to be cut first. And I also have some arrows to show the direction of each piece on, on how it will be on each of the card sketches. Now the second sheet here shows the cutting templates for paper C and D. All of the arrows on paper C go the same way, except for this one piece here for card sketch six. So you can either use non-directional paper for paper C or just turn card sketch number six. And this is the case for the other sheets D through F as well. So if you have any patterns that are directional, you'll want to use it for paper B. These are the last two cutting templates for papers E and F. There is a place here on paper E that has an extra piece that you can use for card sketch 13. So when you're matching up your papers, if you find that the other piece doesn't look right, you can use this one here instead in its place. And then paper F has the square piece that will be cut at a diagonal and it will make two different cards. You'll see that on the sketches here in just a bit. But what I mean by directional is if you have any shapes or patterns that will only look right if it's facing a certain way, then use it for paper B. <laughs> if you have more than one directional pattern, you may have to turn some of your card sketches to make it work. But for this particular challenge, it's best to probably pick patterns that don't have to face a certain way. Now let me explain how the color-coded papers work. This part may help you to determine which papers to use so you'll know what needs to coordinate together. To me, the most challenging part is trying to figure out what papers to assign to each letter. But hey, that's why it's called a challenge, right? But once you get this figured out, everything from here on out is the fun part. But paper A is blue and it is used on the card sketches that are colored blue. So card sketch number two uses only paper A and card sketch number one gets paired with paper C, which is red. And then card sketch three has little strips of paper A that will go behind a big banner that will get cut from paper F, which is purple. And then for card sketch four, the background piece uses paper B and the banners on top. Those would be colored cardstock or other pattern paper. Then for card five, this pairs papers B and D. Card six shows half inch strips with three of them being from paper B and then the other two strips coming from papers C and E, which is green. For the next set of sketches, seven through 12, card seven pairs papers C and D, and then card sketch eight pairs papers C and E, nine pairs C, D, and E, 10 uses only paper D, 11 uses paper E, and then 12 uses B and E. Then for the last four card sketches, numbers 13 through 16, you'll see card sketch 13 uses A, B, C, and D, 14 uses a and F, 15 uses A, E, and F, and then sketch 16 uses paper F, and this makes two cards 
which gives you a total of 17 cards. There's also instructions on the bottom of the last page with some helpful hints. You can use colored cardstock to create your mats for any card sketches that call for those. And that kind of helps to keep costs down if you can remember to cut smaller mats from the larger mats because that'll be hidden behind the pattern paper. Now I'm gonna show you the first set of cards I made for this challenge. I used some leftover pattern paper that I had from a Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kit called Happy Mail. And the paper is called the Happy Paper Pad. This pattern paper is available for purchase as of the date of me filming this. And I'll link it in the description box below. I'm using a variety of products for these cards because I mainly wanted to make a bunch of birthday cards this time. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you probably know I'm a high school teacher and I like to give birthday cards to all of my students. And this year I have 170 and that's a lot of cards that I need. So I'm trying to make as many birthday cards as I can. Now I'll show you each one of these cards individually and just talk about what I did instead of showing you the process for each one. That would make my video entirely too long and I still need to show you how to use the cutting templates. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So here's card sketch number one. My two pattern papers in the middle were watercolor prints. So I added another pattern paper to use underneath rather than just plain cardstock. But I thought it needed more of a pattern and I used a happy die cut that I colored with watercolor pencils and blended it to have an ombre look. I added a birthday stamp underneath and a 3D cupcake sticker from a pack of stickers that I bought at the Dollar Tree and then some glitter enamel dots that I had left over from that pink and main kit. This is card sketch number two and it is a gatefold card. It has this belly band here in the middle that you slide on and off. And I recently posted a tutorial video on my channel on how to make this type of gatefold card for the TLC Designs Monthly Sketch Challenge. And I will link it for you in case you'd like to check it out. I used the oval die from the Butterfly Rectangle Die Set by TLC Designs. And then the Happy Birthday stamp is part of the Savvy Sentiment Stamp Set by Colorado Craft Company. You can even make this card and enter to win the October Challenge over on the TLC Designs Creative Sharing Facebook group as long as you use any TLC Designs product on your card. I don't mind you guys using the cards that you make with my sketches for other card challenges, as long as you reference where you got the sketch for inspiration. This is card sketch number three, and it has those same watercolor prints that were on sketch number one. I used a sentiment strip from Simon Says Stamp and another 3D cupcake sticker. I accidentally forgot to offset my little strips on the left-hand side like it shows on the sketch. I glued them down straight and then I realized my mistake, but the glue was already dry, so I just left it alone. But you might want to use a T ruler to make sure your pieces are lined up. You want it to look like it's going all the way across underneath that banner. I'll be sharing a process video with another set of cards here soon so I can break down the steps for this particular card sketch and explain this in more detail. So make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications if you're not already a subscriber. This is card sketch number four, and I used the Stuck On You Sentiment from the One Cool Pineapple Stamp Set by Simon Says Stamp. And I also used a couple of 3D stickers that I bought from Hobby Lobby on clearance to make this card. And this is card sketch number five. I kept this one pretty simple. I used the Happy Birthday To You stamp from the Spotlight Sayings One Stamp Set by Pink and Main and I added some enamel dots to the top left corner. And this is card sketch number six. I used a T ruler to line up all of these half inch strips and I added a scalloped heart die cut on top and stamped the sentiment on the bottom. And this comes from the Pink and Main's All Occasion stamp set. And then I added a couple of enamel dots on each side. For card sketch seven, Instead of using an oval piece in the middle, I actually used the card insert from the Happy Meal Crafty Courtyard Kit. I fussy cut out the envelope and then just glued it here on top. I just love the flowers and I can stamp the happy birthday sentiment on the inside of the card. This is card sketch eight and it's pretty straightforward. I used some of the same products I've already mentioned. Same with card sketch nine. But for the stamp on this one, I used the Hero Arts Festive Balloon stamp set. 
and I cut the oval using the Whimsy Stamp Slimline Card Builder die set. Card Sketch 10 uses the Spotlight Sayings stamp again. And for my background matte layer, I use some basil cardstock that has polka dots on it. It's kind of hard to see here on the video. And then for Card Sketch 11, I wanted to make an anniversary card for my mom and stepdad. So this sentiment comes from the same Savvy Sentiment stamp set I used earlier by Colorado Craft Company. And I used some baker's twine with a bow around the plaid piece of pattern paper in place of that star embellishment. And I used some pink polka dot paper for the background as well. This is card sketch 12. And I used the diagonal striped embossing folder to emboss the front of the card base. And then the same one cool pineapple stamp set by Simon Says Stamp for the your one in a melon, melon sentiment. And then some more 3D stickers from that same set from the Hobby Lobby clearance. For card sketch 13, I cut the banners from the rectangle pieces and then I added some baker's twine with a bow. And then this is card sketch 14. Again, I used that same Colorado Craft Company stamp set for the happy birthday sentiment. This is card sketch number 15 and I used the Hero Arts Festive Balloon stamp set again for the sentiment inside the circle. And I also embossed a layer of white cardstock with the Let's Polka embossing folder from Pink and Main for the background. And then last but not least, this is card sketch 16, which makes two cards. I used a polka dotted piece of cardstock for the background and some sentiment strips that I cut to measure a quarter of an inch, which is the same size as the little strips. And these both say, here's to an epic birthday. And that's all of the first set of cards I made for this new challenge. Now I'll show you how to use the cutting templates and the best way to cut each of the pattern papers. For this next set of cards that I'll be sharing with you in my upcoming video, I'm using the Be Merry Paper Pad from Pink and Main. This was a free gift with purchase if you spend a certain dollar amount back during their Labor Day sale. And I wanted to make some more Christmas cards. But, but what's great about this particular paper pad is that some of these prints can be used for other occasions too. So I'll also be making some other types of cards as well. I'll quickly show you the patterns that came in this paper pad. And I'm removing the ones that I'll be using for this challenge. And then I'm going to put them in order from papers A to F and trying to make sure that the papers I'm pairing together have coordinating colors or patterns on either side. For trying to figure out how to assign the pattern papers, I will try to explain my thought process as best as I can. I'm just looking at each of the card sketches and both sides of each of the pattern papers to make sure that at least one side matches the other paper or papers that are on the color-coded card sketches. The larger holly print matches these stripes really well. And I know that I can pair these two for papers A and C for card sketch one. And I like the horizontal stripes for card sketch two. I know I wanna use the plaid paper for the background for card sketch four. So I figured out papers A, B, and C. I like the smaller holly print for card seven, nine, and 10. And I'm just making sure I have other strips that coordinate for card nine. So at this point, I think I have A through E assigned. And so I'm just looking at the remaining card sketches to make sure I can use what I have picked out and it looks like everything is going to work. I don't really have any directional paper in this paper pad, which is great. But if you're a paper hoarder like me and you have plenty of it, if you see that what you have isn't gonna work, cut another piece and swap it out. I know that's not really using up all of the scraps with just six sheets of paper, but there's no sense in stressing over it. You probably have plenty of paper like me and I know you want the card to look good. So now I'll show you the best way for cutting the papers using the templates. Because this paper pad has an extra half inch of print at the top where the hole is, the first thing I need to do on all of these sheets is cut that off. But definitely save those if you have paper like this because you can probably use them somewhere on the cards or even replace some of the smaller pieces that may not match. 
This is paper A, and I know I mainly want card sketch number two, which is my gatefold card, to be horizontal stripes. So I'm going to turn the pattern so that when you make the first bottom cut as indicated on the template with the little scissors, it will be in the right direction. So cut off the bottom strip first at one inch and then turn it and cut this piece at five and a half inches, leaving a half inch piece. Now, as I'm cutting, I like to take cellophane sleeves and number them for all of my card sketches and I put the cut pieces inside so that I can keep all of this organized. These are all out of order right now and I'm not going to do this while I'm showing you how to cut the papers for the sake of time but I wanted to mention it so you don't get your pieces mixed up. Another option would be to put them in, inside of your card bases. So the next part you'll cut the top piece at one and three quarter inches and then another one at one and three quarter inches and then the next one at two inches and then that will leave the half inch strip on the end there so next you'll want to cut the three quarter inch piece off of the end of this two inch strip so turn it line it up at four and a quarter inches and these are the pieces for card sketches 14 and 15. And then next you'll cut each of the measurements on this half inch strip. So four of these will need to be cut at one and a quarter inches. And these are for card sketch number three. For cutting template B, I'm cutting off the half inch strip at the top first. And then you'll make the first cut at five inches and then turn it and cut it again. You're gonna cut this in half at three inches and these go with card sketch five. Now you'll have a piece that is five inches by six inches. So turn it on the six inch side and make the next cut at three and three quarter inches and this piece goes in number four. Then this piece here at the bottom, you'll wanna cut off the three quarter inch piece next, and then you'll have the three and a half inch pieces and the three quarter inch piece to cut. So I'm gonna cut the three quarter inch piece off first, and then that way it's easy to just cut the three remaining pieces at a half an inch. And all of these go into card sketch number six. For cutting template C, again I'm first cutting off the half inch strip at the top. And you'll want to make your first cut at five and a half inches. And then cut the strip at four and a quarter inches. And these will go in number six and thirteen. And now because I want this piece cut right here. I'm going to have to turn it and cut it at one and three quarter inches for card sketch number one. And now I've got this bottom piece and I'm going to cut this right hand piece off. So I'm cutting the one and a half inch strip and this is supposed to measure four inches. So you'll have to cut off this little quarter inch piece off the bottom, which will be a scrap piece. But I always save these little pieces so I can glue them to the back side of my layered pieces to make them level when I'm assembling the cards and that'll go in card sketch nine. Then for this next piece, it's supposed to measure four by three inches. So we've got to cut this at three inches. And then the last piece should measure one and a quarter inches. And this goes in number eight and the other piece goes in number seven. Now for paper D, remember that the scissors on the cutting template indicate where you're gonna cut first. So for this paper, the only piece that's turned a different way is number nine. And so I wanna look at my card sketches real quick, the ones that have yellow on them to see which ones I'll be using this little holly pattern on and which ones I might be using the chevron pattern on that's on the back side. So for the ones where I'm using the chevron pattern, I wanna make sure that I turn this piece the right way and the only one I'll be using the chevron pattern on is card sketch number nine. And I want that pattern to be horizontal. So that means that I'll need to turn the paper a certain way. 
so I need to make it turn this way so basically I just laid the pattern the pattern paper on top of this and I turned it so I'd know how it needs to be cut and so I cut this at four inches and then I cut the end strip at three inches and then For the top piece, I'm cutting two one inch pieces that will go in number five. And then the bottom piece is for card number 13. And then I've got this piece here and you'll first cut one at two inches and then one and a half inches, which is for number nine. And then the last piece is two and a half and that goes in number 10. For cutting template E, Again, cutting off that half inch strip. Um, on this particular template, the scissor cut line is horizontal here at the bottom. So I'm gonna cut this at four and a half inches first. And so now you have this bottom piece here. And so I'm measuring this at four and a quarter inches so I can cut off that corner piece that measures one and three quarters. And then that goes in card sketch number 15. And then this other piece needs to be cut at half an inch and it will go in number six. And then the one inch piece will go in number 12. And then for this piece that's left here, this is my top piece here and it measures six inches across. And so I'm going to cut this at four inches and this two inch piece here on the right, I need to cut this little three quarter inch piece off here at the bottom. And this piece is actually an alternative piece for card sketch 13. So this pattern may end up working better for you than the other little strip that you cut off of paper C for card sketch 13. And then that rectangle piece goes in number 11. And what's left is this four by five and a half inch piece. So I need to turn it and cut it at three inches and that will leave us with a one and a half inch strip for number nine. And of course the top piece is for number eight. And then this is the last piece, paper F, and I'm gonna cut off the one in, or the half inch strip first to make it six by six. And now keep in mind that this square here in the top left corner is gonna be turned at a diagonal. So you definitely wanna make sure you use non-directional paper on this one. There's no getting around it. <laughs> but so cut this piece at three and a half inches first, and now I'm taking the bottom piece, which should measure two and a half inches, and then I'm gonna turn it and cut it at five inches. And then I'm gonna cut off this piece here, which should measure two and a half inches. And now I'm left with this three and a half inch square that I need to cut at a diagonal. So there's two ways I can do this. I can make it so that I cut along my stripes or turn it so that my diagonal stripes become horizontal on the card once it's turned. And that's the way I decided to go. But to cut this at a diagonal, you'll just turn it and line up the corners on your paper trimmer. And then now I have my two pieces for cards 16 and 17. I've sorted all of these pieces into my cellophane sleeves. And I went through each of the pieces and decided what colors I wanted to use for my layers. And cut those out and i also decided what stamps and dies i wanted to use for each of the cards so in the next few days i'll be putting these together and sharing another video so you can see the process of how i use the be merry paper pad from pink and main so be sure to check back soon now don't forget for this challenge you can have a chance to win one of three amazing prizes from one of our sponsors and they are each valued at 50 dollars our sponsors are pink and main TLC Designs, and Whimsy Stamps. You don't have to use any particular company's products to enter this challenge. You can use what you have in your stash. And you have until December 31st of 2021 to create your cards and post them on either Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 4. Now don't forget to join Kendra's Card Challenge's Facebook group for additional card making inspiration. You can also check out the social media accounts of our design team members throughout the duration of the challenge to see what they create. The design team members for this quarter are Kel Akapan, Kimberly Skinner, Patricia Pinky O'Hagan, Nikki Shaw, and Cindy Ellen Robinson. I will post links to their YouTube channels in the description box below. So if you're looking for more crafty friends to follow, subscribe to their channels as well. 
Links to their other social media accounts are on my website on the challenge page, which I'll also have linked below. If you think you might give this challenge a go, leave me a comment and give this video a thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd share it with any of your crafty friends who might enjoy making a bunch of cards. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end of this video. I'm really excited about this new challenge and I hope you are too. I can't wait to see what you create and I will see you again soon. Have a wonderful crafty day.